Hey, hey, dirty trucking. I'm back at the house. This is Oh, what time is it? Oh, it is uh, 9.39. I've completely wasted the day, lost money. I'm um, going to lose money tomorrow. Um, and get this, uh, Hertz sent me, a, I mean, not Hertz. Uber sends me a message telling me that before they can um, put the vehicle back on the account so I can go back online, they require an inspection. <laughs> I'm not doing it. See, and that's what they do. That car should have been inspected before I got in it. I had no business having to add oil to it. After I informed Hertz that the car was calling for oil change sooner than when they required it for it to be changed. Then after I, I checked it and seen it didn't have no oil in it. Now I got to go in my pocket and put oil in it. That's what Hertz suggested. He said, well... You not going to get approved. They always talking about something I'm not going to get approved of. But I'm spending my money when they talking about I'm not going to get approved. I ain't got no business buying oil for a fucking rental car. I don't care if it had to go another 1,400 miles, 1,400 miles before it got into the mileage for you to approve an oil change on the car. The car was calling for oil change. And had I checked it before I called them and found out it was bone dry, you should have made an exception and told me to get that car to the, shop, the shop, get the oil checked, get it changed. No, instead of doing that, not only am I paying for a weekly rental, now I'm paying for oil to put in the car to get to the mileage for to have the oil changed. So, I'm at home, I get a message from Uber, uh, they, their apologies, uh, but for in order for me to go back online, they require the car to have an inspection. Well, if you require it, then you take your ass and go take the car and have it inspected. That's not my motherfucking car. Because when I tried to get a car to prevent all this and prevent having to deal with this, I couldn't get a car. Ain't that right, drive time? I tried to car van up. Try to get a car. You know what they had on their website? That they don't use income from rideshare drivers. From Uber or Lyft. That's why I couldn't get a car when I tried to get one through Carvana. I kid you not. That's what it said. I went to go put in an application. They said online, we do not accept income from Uber or Lyft drivers. Rideshare. Well, I'll be down. That's the same as me being independent trucking. But you would accept that shit, wouldn't you? Ride shit drivers are independent drivers. So I didn't bother to put in an application. Put in an application with Enterprise. You know, Enterprise rent their rental cars. They sell their cars just like, like Hertz do. That's why the car I was in got sold. Put in for Enterprise. To try to prevent all this. See, I'm in the business of prevention. I'm in the business of stopping shit that will prevent you or have you have your income interrupted. That's the that's what I do. And I'm in the business of that for me. Because these businesses I'm working to, working with, damn ain't in the business of that for me. I do it for myself. But had I not told Uber the reason why the, I had to refund the refund the writer, I probably wouldn't have a problem. I ain't never heard of no shit like let a ride a driver had told me the car cut off. See, what Uber does when you call them, they write all that shit up in a message. And send that shit over. They did this shit on purpose. They knew that car was going to do that. Because they knew it had auto. They know that car had an auto start feature. They knew it was going to do that. And when you do shit that you know what's going to happen. Then I'm going to do shit that you know I'm going to do. I'm not dealing with this shit no more. That's not my job. To be free labor for you. Now I got to pay for a weekly rental. And then when it's time for the oil change, I got to 
interrupt my day taking the car to go get an oil change. We don't get paid to do that. That's not my job. But they made it our jobs when we rent the car. Now, if you want us to do that, then you need to be paying us to do that. You need to give me a little change for interrupting my day to take your car that I'm paying for to go get the oil change. Yes, I'm driving it. But I didn't put all those miles on there yet to need the oil change. And even if I did, when your car requires an oil change and you don't have your own personal shop to take it to, to get it done, and you want the drivers to interfere with their time and the money they could make to go sit up and waste time at a shop. That's free labor. They did not have to remove that car. So what it is, they using me to get the car inspected. So now, and I, I should have known. By the way, that young boy was on the phone when I called maintenance. He was telling me they wasn't going to prove the car getting an oil change sooner than it needs to be. It was only a 1,400 miles shy of before it had to go in the shop, which it will be by the end of the week. Because I usually put 300, 270 to 300, almost 300 miles or maybe over a day on the goddamn car. So by Friday, it would have needed an oil change. And I could have kept my $12 in my pocket for that oil I bought. They don't think, but these the these these the people they got behind the scenes that we have to deal with that they put in charge to run shit. They didn't have to take the car off the count. There was no, there was wrong, there was no reason, no concern. I was concerned why it was cutting off, but I was paying attention that every time it did it, I had the auto start button on. And when it happened, when I first got the car. I kept the button off the remainder of the day. I didn't have a problem with the car. But you can't tell these people that at Uber on the phone. Now they want to rake up all the bills for inspections. Get me to go take the car for an inspection. I'll be damned. If you're going to keep doing that shit. Now I see if I got the car. I'm driving around. I'm putting miles on it. It needs some things. I just got in the motherfucking car. You sold the one I was in. And then I was supposed to have been getting in that electric car because she claimed they didn't have no other car for me to get in. But when I came back with the car, when it broke down, up there in Mount Clemens, when it cut off, rather, I'm seeing people just riding out all willy-nilly with all these cars. That she's saying they didn't have nothing ready available but that electric car. Now you want to force me to get in an electric car. They like to make you get in shit that you don't want to be in. She said, I'm going to have to put you in an electric car. She ain't got nothing else. And they would tell the other customer they ain't had nothing else. But when I came back and when they cut off, these motherfuckers was riding out in something else. I don't think all them cars was Uber car electric. And you got to be Tesla approved to get in a Tesla. But them motherfuckers cost, cost, they cost shit. More than one I'm in. I don't want no goddamn Tesla. I don't even want no electric car. I was just going to take it because she claimed it wasn't else they putting in. But then this guy pulls up in this goddamn car. And now it's cutting off. I told you, I paid attention to it. When it cut off the first time, that auto start button was on. And I didn't know the feature was on the car until after I took the car up to AutoZone and the guy looked in it. When he seen the key fob, he seen the symbol on there. He said, oh, this car has auto start feature. I said, what are you, what, 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 what you talking about? It, this start stop feature. He said, that's what the symbol is. He said, yeah, it's on your dash. And he showed me where it was. When that light is on, it means it's activated. So that's what cut the car off. Why I cut it off? I don't know. I don't. Is it supposed to cut it off and keep it off? You got to sit there and then it, then all of a sudden they want to crank back up. Who the fuck want that kind of shit on their damn car? So, then it sent me a message talking about we require an inspection 
before you go back online. So that's Uber and they fucking workers interfering with me making money again. So I told them the car is going back. I paid $304 for a rental car to use for the week. I didn't pay for a car that needed to go to an inspection. I didn't pay for a car that had a feature on it that was going to cut the motherfucker off. I wasn't aware of the feature. I wasn't familiar with the feature. And then I left the feature on and it cut the motherfucker off again. All I did was simply ask for a refund for the, the rider that it cut it off on and ran a tab up. And then I asked for a refund for the rider before that that was getting dropped off at the Ford plant. The GPS went haywire. I tried to take a different route to get him over to the job, but it, the bridge was closed. And uh, he told me the bridge was closed. I went over that way to see if I could go down the side street and cut down the back way, but you couldn't even do that. So I ended up having to go back out, go all the way back down to another way to go down to get him over to Ford. And that's, you know what? I hate shops now as much as I hate Chrysler. I hate dealing with maintenance. Repairs as much as I hate Chrysler. And now they want me picking up all these UAW workers. I don't, let me tell you my issue with Ford. Let me tell you what happened with me at Ford. I'm going to put this story out there. True story. Ford, years ago, I mean years ago, I think I was still, God. I don't even know if I was in my 40s, maybe early 40s or late 30s. Ford. Oh, let me tell you. Let me let me, let me just let me let me give you full history of it. How I got in Chrysler. I mentioned it before, but let me remind you how I got in Chrysler. Some years, 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 years ago. I was in my twenties. Um, I was made aware that there was a hiring thing going on at Michigan Works, Michigan Works on Fort Street, and uh, they were hiring for uh, Chrysler and Ford. And I got word of it through a friend who had put in, told me. And then I called, and the lady said, yes, they're here. They're testing. Uh, you need to get here today if you want to put in. And that day I went in there, I actually took the thing for Chrysler and Ford. Both of them were there. Ford never called me. Chrysler did. Uh, they said that they needed so many workers by March. Uh, they had had us in a room up there on the, uh, and told us they needed so many workers by March. If you don't hear from them, they got everybody. So March came and went. I didn't hear from them until I got that page when I was working for Smart saying this is Chrysler. Uh, they were offering me employment. Uh, if I say no, they would never call me again. So that's when I went into Smart, talked with some co workers. I told them what, 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 They said, you better get your ass on out of here. And that's how I ended up over at Chrysler. But if I'd have known, if, if I could have saw into my own future that five years in the future, Chrysler was going to do some shit to me that ruined my life, I'd have stayed as smart. Because I'll be retiring out of smart in one more year. So, fast forward to Ford, the story about Ford. Uh, I told you, they... These come, these, this game shit that I've been complaining about, it's been going on for years. I can tell you some stories from way back. So let me tell you about Ford. I put in, Ford was hiring. They was, uh, back when I think it was still called, uh, I don't know if it was Cobalt, Joe Lewis. It was Joe Lewis Arena. They had a hiring fair. Um, I think I got connected to it through Michigan Works again. But anyway, I was given something to go there and take a test. We were all in this particular room at the, uh, down here. Now it's called Huntington Place now. Um, it was Joe Lewis then, Joe Lewis Arena. Um, no, it was, uh, Cobra Hall. And now it's Huntington Place. Um, so I went in there, took the test. They said they were hiring for the Wixom plant. No, the Woodhaven plant. My, my bad, I'm speaking too soon. Let me slow down. They were hiring for the Woodhaven Ford plant, which is off of 75. So I went in there, took the test. And then shortly after that, they had a job fair at Cobra Hall. And one of the vendors displays there was 
Ford. And I went over there and told the lady, I said, I took the test for Ford. They said they were hiring for the Wixom plant. She said, Wixom? They about to close that plant. I'm like, huh? I said, why would they have us take a test for a plant they about to close? That's what they told me. That the, now I keep saying Wixom is Woodhaven, Michigan. I keep saying Wixom is Woodhaven. They, I went in there at the Ford display in there for at the job fair. And I told the lady, we, we took a, all of us came down here and took a test for Ford. They said they were hiring for the Woodhaven plant. That's all for 75. She said, Woodhaven, they about to close that plant. And I'm like, why would they have us take a test for that? She had no comment. They about to close the plant. And God is my witness. I'm not lying to you. And my truck and I ride past that plant. That plant never closed. It never closed down. That plant never, they were still, they were still in operation. From what I see, it was empty a couple of times, but the plant never closed down. Wixom is still, I mean, damn, Woodhaven is still open. Woodhaven is still open. That's why I never got in with Ford. But now, since I be posting my dislike about what happened to me with, with Chrysler and the UAW, now they think they're going to be running me around, uh, picking up Ford workers, taking them on their property, riding me around so the drivers can get my phone number and all that shit. No. I'm, I'm tired. I want out of this shit. I don't want to be dealing with that shit. See, uh, they call it uh, triggering. They do stuff to trigger you. And this company and th this deliberate routing I be on and the deliberate shit that's been going on, the Pacific passengers I've been picking up, is triggering. They've been triggering me. And for me to have a peace of mind, I need to get rid of and get away from what's been triggering me. And what's been triggering me is Uber. And this shit going on with the operation. The shit that goes on with the cars. The shit that goes on in this apartment is a trigger. Reminding me of my past or what happened in the past. It's a trigger. And for you to have peace of mind, you need to get rid of and stay away from shit that is triggering you. Or people that intentionally try to trigger you. And it's constantly a trigger when you got me picking up UAW motherfuckers. Because I don't understand that. Now, I was a UAW worker, so I could speak on it. I was UAW local 140. But UAW is not God. And that's what I don't like. When they mention uh, doing stuff for the workers... They're always exhibiting and displaying UAW like it ain't nobody else. UAW does not make up the entire population here in Michigan or the city of Detroit. Detroit is the auto industry. That's what we known for. That in Motown. But let's get this straight. The UAW only benefits people who are UAW members. So when they get on TV. And talking about doing stuff. To help the workers. And you displaying UAW. Well, what the fuck about me? What about truck drivers? What about average workers, restaurants? Retail. What about them? Look at the rallies, at the presidential rallies. Look who be there. Shitload of UAWs. And I can speak on that. I was a UAW member. 
And look what the fuck they did to me. UAW members are only beneficial to UAW members. That's it. To that plant they work for. Or whoever they work for, that's US, UA, UAW. What, what, what they got to do with us? To help you give them what they got to do with us? They making high price cars that because of life, then they destroyed the majority of our 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 our, our credit. At 652 and us financially, we can't even get a car. We can't get none of that shit. What the fuck is it helping the UAW gonna how's that gonna benefit me? I can't even get a goddamn car. But they can, they can use their benefits. I remember that. That was a nice feature of being UAW. But I didn't walk around here like I was God because it was UAW. I was UAW. To me, UAW, what that local did to me, UAW Local 140 for Chrysler, ain't shit. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. What they did to me was low down and dirty, and they ain't shit. I don't go glorifying an organization because you UAW. You UAW. That means you work in an auto plant. Or you work somewhere that's dealing with the auto industry. That ain't me. You got other type of workers out here. Oh, they did this. The, uh, uh, uh. No, that wasn't even part of the presidential thing. You know, they got construction workers. Uh, the, the, the city here did a, a, a video about what they plan on doing to for construction workers. What about wrestling? You ever seen the videos about trucking? Have you ever heard any talk about what they're going to do for truckers? When have you seen anything done for truckers? Now, I'm no longer a trucker. I'm average now. I'm ride share. I'm whatever. When have you seen anything they're going to do for regular, the regular worker? How about tackling the issues with that at-will employment law? Because that's where the majority of the problems come from in the workforce. When your employer is allowed to make up anything to get rid of you or get rid of you from anything. And you ain't done nothing. And it disrupt your income. But now you on TV talk about you want to create policies to put, you know, help the workers to keep money in their pocket, put money in their pocket. Well, the money getting taken out their pocket because of the at-will employment law. That's where you need to begin at. That's where the problem is. And that at-will employment law is over in trucking. That's for a worker, a company worker, or independent. This business how about this is at will employment state. That's what they do. That's why you got high turnover rate in trucking. At will employment states. They don't care if you stay or go. Plus they hire on a regular basis. Probably getting money for that. You want to do something for the workers, you need to tackle the problems in the at will employment law. Because that law is too broad. It gives them too much uh, leeway to get rid of valuable and good employment. Employees. All the jobs I got let go from. I was one of their best employees. But look what I got let go for. Shit they done started. Shit I complain about they should have been doing. Or like Christ, the shit they done made up. And here we go with this shit. I'm in Ryan's share. Now I got to pay for the car, buy oil, and now I got to be subjected to getting into a car with, with shit going on, and they, they want to inspect it. And I told you it was the auto start, stop button. See, that's what happened when you got motherfuckers working for you that don't even understand shit about a goddamn car. There was no need to remove me from the list. Now, if there was a truly valid issue, I was monitoring it because I thought something was wrong with the car until I noticed that button was on every time it shut off. 
And when I turned it off, I didn't have no more problems. But I fucked around after I put that oil in there, cranked that car up, and forgot to turn it off. It had been on the whole time. I'm just riding, riding, riding. And that bitch cut off at the light. Uber removed the car like it's something wrong. Now they raking up a bill for an inspection. Now they done sit up there controlling my time. Want me go sit up in a shop around a bunch of mechanics and shit. Wasting my fucking time on a car. And it was because of a fucking button. But they don't understand that because them ladies, they got answer the phone. And them, the people they got running behind the phone don't know nothing about that shit. Everything ain't got to be a take you off the account shit. I said it was a button. I sent them the pictures of the button of what it says on the dash when it's on. It says auto stop when it's on. So that means the auto will cut off. It didn't say when. It just happened to do it at that light. Feature I don't like. I don't understand. I don't even know why it's on there. Why? Why the fuck is it on there? Now, telling me in order to get me back online. I need to go have their vehicle inspected. That's your vehicle. Why don't you take one of them? Why don't you tell that worker that pulled the car off the account to go get your ass down here, go to Clinton Township, get the car, go get it inspected. Instead of making me do the shit. I didn't ask for that damn car. I asked for a car that wasn't electric and that one came in. But I think they had more cars. They could have put me in better than that. That's what they like to do. They like to put me in cars with problems. And think I'm supposed to be wasting my time in shops sitting up around motherfucking mechanics. I'm sick of this shit. That was my biggest headache in trucking. That's why I got out of it. That was one of the reasons, main reasons. Outside of them interfering with me making money. It is doing it here. I'm not your free labor. You don't get people to do shit for free. And that's what the fuck they've been doing. You've been getting me to diagnose what's wrong with your car, tell you what's wrong with your car, and then on top of that, getting me taking it to the shop to get it worked on for free. Wasting hours of my motherfucking time with that bullshit. Now, I ain't made no money today. They're going to send me a message. We require, yeah, I require to make money at this company. I require good equipment to make money. I require equipment that the very neck that don't fucking cut off because of the feature on it I wasn't aware of. And I also require not to have my income interrupted because I told you the car cut off because I left the feature fucking on and you don't understand what the fucking shit is.